All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great day. So my name is Ruban Azim, and uh, I'm a software engineer in Build Solutions team. So the topic I'm going to present today is about integration of OBS with GitHub and GitLab. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to focus on actually three major things. The first one is introduction to SEMC integration. And in this part, I will walk you through, actually give an example of what our workflow is, how actually every piece combines, and how this whole integration works, and give you a brief introduction about requirements to integrating SCMCI uh, integration into any choice of uh, source code management system. It could be GitHub or GitLab. And in the second part, uh, we will look into a very simple implementation of workflow. I will walk you guys through uh, implementation of workflow, uh, explain definition of workflow uh, YAML file. And then in the last, uh, we will discuss some limitation of this system. So as an introduction, uh, we know most of us here use GitHub or GitLab to collaborate. We use uh, these source code management systems to manage sources of our, our projects. And uh, we can take advantage of that. For example, we can, whenever there is uh, new information or we update our package on GitHub, for example, we create a new pull request. What happens is uh, GitHub going to interact with OBS and OBS is going to take the latest changes from your um, GitHub or GitLab repo and going to build the package and then respond back to your source code management system. So in this example, I'm talking about GitHub. So before we start uh, looking into implementation, we actually need, some, need to fulfill some requirements. Uh, first is obviously we need a repo on GitHub or maybe GitLab, and then we need a package on OBS. So actually exactly the same package on OBS. And then we also need a definition of workflow. Uh, by default, OBS uh, follows a path where it's going to find your workflow file. Uh, by default, OBS looks inside a .obs folder where your workflows file should reside. And then we need to create uh, some personal access token, and then we also need to create uh, OBS workflow token, and then at the last, we need one last piece, that's setting up a, web, a webhook. So here, as I mentioned, uh, the personal access token uh, we need from GitHub uh, should have the minimum permissions uh, for repo. And then with, uh, we use this personal access token on uh, OBS workflow to create, here you can see where it's asking SCM token, this token should go into that field. And with that, we can create a new uh, OBS workflow token. And then the last piece I was talking about is webhook. Uh, so webhook, uh, in these webhooks are used to communicate uh, with OBS. GitHub is going to use these webhooks whenever there is a new event, new commit, new pull request, new push in the pull request, or whenever you merge a pull request as well. It's going to uh, update to OBS and asking to run a workflow file. And then OBS communicates back to GitHub. So these are some fields that we need uh, payload URL should follow this pattern because this is the URL where we are expecting uh, GitHub or other SCMs to ping us. And then we also need this secret. And then also the last field, uh, let us select the individual events. Here we are going to tell GitHub or GitLab they have similar settings. We are going to tell them which events do we want to run the workflow for? 
So whenever there is a new payload uh, that OBS receives, is we just check if uh, the payload is for opening a pull request or if the payload is for a new commit, things like that. So yeah, the process behind the scene, what happens? OBS and GitHub uh, talk to each other via tokens. In the previous slide, we saw when we create uh, secrets and OBS workflow token, that's what it says. These tokens are necessary for authorization. And then uh, the second point uh, is about the webhook that we saw earlier, how to define a webhook. And then uh, the configuration files. So actually this configuration file is uh, workflow definition that uh, I talk about. Uh, by default, the definition should reside inside .obs folder. And then OBS execute the workflow. Uh, obviously, whenever there is a new event, OBS going to look for that workflow file, execute the workflow, and based on the result of that workflow, OBS is going to uh, tell GitHub that the latest changes are succeeding or if the build is failed for certain packages. Yeah. So this is a very small example of uh, how a workflow file looks. In this uh, workflow file, we can see there is one step. This step is about branch package. A workflow could have multiple steps. Uh, moving forward to next slides, I will show you what steps are possible that a workflow supports right now. But here, in this example, uh, this branch package is accepting three arguments, uh, source project, source package, and then target project. So in this definition, we are telling OBS, or actually uh, the definition, this definition of workflow says, look for a package inside the project games because uh, on OBS, we have multiple projects, and then in project, we have multiple packages. So it is looking for Citrus package inside the project game, and then it's going to branch it inside another project, home chain. So at the end, we are expecting something. Home chain should contain this Citrus package. So the steps of uh, workflow. Uh, these are basically the steps a workflow uh, could run right now. Branch package, link package, configure repositories, rebuilding package, set flag, trigger service. Uh, for the purpose of uh, this demonstration, uh, I'm only going to focus on branch package. Uh, uh, we can add, uh, we can take advantage of uh, filters as well. Workflow not only supports uh, these steps, but we can tell a workflow uh, what are the filters we need to look for. For example, right now, a workflow in OBS supports two type of filters. The first one is branch or the event. In the branch, we can specify exactly which, for which branch we should run a workflow. And then we can also specify which branch we can ignore. In the first example, we are telling only consider the workflow for these two branches, master and staging. And uh, in the second example, we are telling ignore staging, but run the workflow for any branch except the staging. And then in the last example, we can see run the workflow when the event is pull request. Because event can be mul different, multiple events. Uh, a commit, a pull request, or anything. And yeah, this is about the status. So whenever we open a pull request, uh, OBS starts building the package with the latest changes that you have in your new pull request. And these pull requests, uh, the results of the buildings, OBS is going to uh, inform uh, GitHub about the status of these messages. So in the first step, we see whenever a pull request opens, the initial event says this uh, initial, yeah, it just says the workflow has started in the first example. And in the second screenshot, you can see 
the build here has been succeeded for multiple uh, distri distributions. Uh, for example, uh, Tumbleweed or, uh, you know, different uh, operating systems, which we want to run the workflow for. Uh, during the integration of workflow, uh, we can expect uh, certain issues that you can run into. Uh, sometimes, maybe uh, we don't have authorization to look into the errors uh, GitHub is receiving. So you can check errors in both sides. You can check errors in OBS, and then you can also check the errors in GitHub webhook. So the, the screenshot right now is not clear because uh, when I was uploading the slides, I guess it's not so clear here in the screen, but uh, I'll try to explain. In the last part, you can see webhook response body. So these webhook response body tells you the same error that Git GitHub tells you. So either way, you can look inside the workflow run or you can look inside the GitHub response to debug your workflows. Because sometimes it could be confusing to debug them. And the place to find uh, these workflow runs is inside the token. So when you create a new workflow token, you can find all these workflow runs inside that. And uh, yeah, so about the limitations. Right now, th the workflows are only supported for GitHub, GitLab, and Gitty. And we we can only access the repositories that are private at the that are public at the moment, and uh, the instances for GitHub and GitLab should be public as well. So these are the limitations right now. Uh, private repositories, private instances are not uh, accessible, or we don't support it right now in the workflows. So here. Uh, you can find some very great documentation about implementing a workflow. Uh, here we have a great user uh, documentation. I just uh, described you uh, first a branch package step, but, but there are multiple steps and a workflow can be very complex based on your requirement. So definitely if you are uh, integrating workflows in your repo, you should look for these documentations. And then in the second, uh, we have uh, a blog post, uh, a blog where we, uh, whenever there is a new update, we post stuff. So it's great if you want to keep updated, just check them. Uh, and uh, we also announce on mailing list and in different channels as well on Slack. And then this is a example repo that I created you can look how, uh, basically it just gives you a, a basic information about the structure of uh, the repo, your package, how the workflow, you can place the workflow, exactly, things like that. And then in the last part, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you, if something is not answered in the documentation, you can always uh, reach us uh, using this email. So before we finish, uh, I would like to answer some of your questions. If you guys have any confusion or question, anything you'd like to ask. Hey, thank you for a nice presentation. So my question is like, so this OBS workflow executes on OBS side. So the, this is format that you parse and you execute, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, like, what was the thinking about implementing another workflow? Like, GitHub has its own workflow and actions. Like, I will probably appreciate uh, GitHub Actions instead of the workflow inside of OBS. Uh, so, GitHub Actions uh, is something different. Uh, wor uh, workflows, we are calling it workflow because uh, it's an internal name. Uh, if you want to integrate uh, OBS with GitHub, because you maybe you want to, you know, build your packages. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so GitHub supports building packages right now because OBS, on OBS you can build multiple packages for multiple distributions. So if you are creating new changes, uh, you have new pull requests in your repo, uh, OBS can pull all these changes and build packages for you and then the response of uh, those statuses. For example, if a package is built successful or if there are failures, 
uh, it can be respond to GitHub. So you can see uh, what are the failures. Yeah, I guess uh, that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. I mean, my thinking was that in GitHub Action, I can also call the OBS API and do the same, right? As like upload the, create the new branch, upload the tarball, and start building, and then report back. And you are taking another approach. So you webhook that notifies OBS. OBS mm -hmm. do, does all of the workflow part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. that explains. It. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if there are no questions, uh, I would just like to conclude here. And thank you, everyone, for listening.